Hi and welcome to the show. It, this is, uh, of course, the Neighbourhood News. And uh, we've got uh, news for you today from the Neighbourhood. And the news comes from the Neighbourhood right through the window. And uh, we look out the window and what do we see? And we see traffic, weather and sports. But we're not seeing any of that today, of course, because it's always the same down here in the COVID jail. We are getting spring is coming. Uh, so the weather is starting to turn, and uh, we got a nice about uh, 10 degree spread there. And uh, what's happening, of course, is is that uh, uh, she's warming up good, <clears throat> and that's good because uh, the quicker we can get to the grass cutting, the better. I tell you what, uh, things are gonna be a lot better when a man can stand out on a fucking sword and uh, see if he can get that grass to jump. Now, uh, as far as the traffic, there's no traffic, and uh, listen, I got, I put the most traffic on the road. Uh, nobody else is doing anything. I, in my neighborhood, I'm putting on more miles than anybody. I'm in the lead by far. Uh, but uh, the weather, she turned in, and the sports, she's over. We did uh, we did the snow shoveling, she's all over. I'm looking forward to the grass cutting season, right? Uh, that's where we're really going to shine. Now, uh, the snow shoveling season, as everybody knows, I've done several episodes on the snow shoveling. It was, it was ahead of a season, and it was my first season here, and it was really great. Got to know some of the competitors. I got to see some champion level, champion gold medal championship level uh, performances here. That's for sure. The competition was very high. And I was very pleased to see the eventual winner. I think he earned it. And um, I'm looking forward to taking that medal away from him. Yeah, I'm looking forward to earning his respect yeah, by taking that fucking medal away from him. I got to earn it. And uh, But of course, I'm going to wait for the second season for that. I'll go to the first season. I'll just have a look around. Now, I'm not doing that with the grass. The grass, I start off. Uh, as she says, uh, guns are blazing. You know, I hit the ground running. That's what I do, right? And uh, oh yeah, there's no messing around now, because I know I, I'm gonna get right ahead of it. Now I don't need to wait and see. I already saw. I know. Okay, so uh, in the grass, you know, it's a look, see, and go situation. Now that's really the procedure, okay? And uh, I developed this uh, procedure as, as a strategy of uh, doing things when I was in the grass business. You look. You see and you go. That's it. And don't waste time. Don't fucking waste time. Uh, look, see, and go. Now, uh, so I'm looking forward to the grass cutting in now. This year, in all my life, I had every kind of mower there is. I got uh, antique mowers, uh, hand built mowers, a fucking donkey powered mower, every kind of mower there is. I got the high speed, high precision Formula One mowers. Those are the ones I'm uh, pro level on. I'm pro level on all of them, but I got 10,000 hours. I got 10,000 hours on the fucking Greensmaster. Sure, I do. My fucking lines are straight like a fucking demon. Straight like you wouldn't believe. I burn them in. Hey, hopping and jumping and fucking just glowing. Beautiful goodness. Now, one time I was, now, sometimes, you know, when the golf business starts to dry up, you got to look around. The turf guys, you got nowhere to go. You end up out on the sod farm out there with the rest of those fucking rednecks. That's not the way to be. So you got to be in a club situation. So sometimes you got to travel the world one time. It is long before, but I go find myself out there in a foreign country, mind you, uh, where they do the cricket. And they're painting a cricket pitch, and they need to get to cut the grass, take care of things. Okay, so that's me. And uh, now that was the time. I learned about cricket. Cricket's no good. Don't worry about cricket. Don't even waste your time with cricket. Uh, but uh, they do have grass keepers there. They got that grass keeper. The guy did a good job. I, I, I lasted one season just to learn about it. But what I did learn about it, what, what was happening there, it's indicative of the whole situation. We had the electric mower. You ever seen an electric mower? Well, they've had them for a long time. Electric mowers, it's kind of like an electric car. It's like, did you know there was an electric car back in fucking 1910 or something? The same with the mowers. Technology is technology, and it's always there. But uh, they just cut the grass with an electric mower. Now, this is a real mower. It's a green monster. It's a Toro fucking thing. You can plug it in. Sharpen the blades, the same as everything else. But uh, you know, it's a real. You got the real bed knife and the whole thing. She goes along like a beautiful fucking power, power, long pair, fucking pair of scissors, a circular pair of scissors. She's going to cut in the draw, it's fucking beautiful. Set it down pretty small there for the turf. So, worked pretty good. She didn't have to torque it if you want. Something missing all the time with the electric. You know, when you use the gas power, you get on the old two-stroke. No, you get the power there. That's the way she go. You used to go to the old Cushman there. That's the fucking way. Those old fucking Cushmans back from the 60s. Uh, with, uh, with the heavy gauge steel, you could fucking cut grass all day. You could top dress and then cut it again. It never hurt it. These electric ones are a little bit more finicky, a little bit more, uh, you know, under durable is what I think. But, that's not a here and there, but all I'm saying is that each year I'm going to be a little prepared because I've done it once before, but I've inherited here at this new place an electric mower. 
I say, electric mower. I move into the place, you know, and the old guy leaves stuff uh, behind. They always do, you know, when you move a lot, you see. If you've moved once or twice, you probably saw, you know, it's leftover stuff from the, from the old guy, from the last guy that was here. The previous contestants. So anyways, they leave things behind. This guy left a mower. And uh, she's a brand new, I don't think she's got a single hour on her. I don't think she, I think he got her in the fall right before he left, when I got the place. Brand new, brand spanking new. She's one of those uh, battery power mowers, you know, she's a regular push mower. Rotary, uh, you know, homeowner, residential type. It's okay. And uh, you got a line trimmer too there, weed eater. Now, I tried a lot of these residential electrics and a lot of them in the past, and uh, I never really got anywhere with them. I didn't find they had the power, the torque, or, uh, you know, any of that stuff. Didn't find any convenience. Uh, I don't mind mixing, you know. A lot of people that go to the stroke, you can't mix the gas. You know, you get somebody to cut the grass, that's fine. But who's going to mix the gas to put it in the fucking gas? Nobody can do that. Not anymore. You know? I mean, uh, back even in the day when we had capable people, we'd have a crew of 50 people, and there's probably only 10 of them that can mix the gas. You wouldn't even trust half of those. So, usually they send a fucking, get the assistant out there, mixing the gas before the shift. Don't trust these guys. They'll fucking put diesel in the gas. and have to fucking gas the diesel. You gotta be careful. So, and it's 25 to 1, 32 to 1. They don't know. I don't know fucking anything to one. So, you be careful with that. You don't have to do anything with the battery. You just plug it in and go. It's foolproof. That's what they call it. Well, when things are foolproof, you live in a world of fools, and that's the world we got now. A world of fools. Because everything is foolproof. Yeah, you can't do anything with a foolproof. You can't make a mistake. You can't make it great. That is the truth now, isn't it? So, I don't mind. I like a little limitation. For me... I like to go Russian style. Sure, anybody can do it when you got all the resources and everything you want. See if you can do it with nothing. Then we'll see what you can do. Those guys. Yeah, that's how you become a what they call a hero of the Soviet Union, actually. Take something out of nothing. So I'm gonna use uh, brand new uh, tools, and I'm gonna get that grass jumping. And I tell you, I'm, I'm not gonna fuck around. Now, I like to lay back in the snow shoveling because you know the snow shoveling. Truth be told, I was never pro. I mean, I'm a top level competitor because I got I got a lot of style, and I'm into the competitive spirit. But I wouldn't say. I mean, these guys, uh, you know, listen. I don't want to. You know, I'm not. Uh, no, listen. I got a chance, the same as everybody else, and I'll try my best, and I'll do pretty well. But uh, you know, and I'll even bet on myself. I don't mind. But on the grass, it's a whole different situation. That outcome is not uh, predetermined. The grass situation, I've already won. I'm already the best. I'm already, it's already won. It's just a question of playing it out. I'm not even worried. I got my confidence level is so high, and I don't, even, I don't even fuck around with any of that stuff. I don't waste any of that time. I'm getting right to it. And uh, what do we want? Well, we want what we want is we want it fucking playable. That's for sure, right? So when you're talking about grass, it's not just grass. You've got the fucking surrounds as well. And uh, the understory, the rest of that stuff, no, you know, it's, it's okay. It's a, lot, it's a game of edges. You make the edges and you get to fucking play in nice and straight. So it's not flat, but she's not slopey. <clears throat> Too bad. We've got good edges. we got a nice asphalt there in the laneway, so we've got the edge wheel nice and straight. We can make a smooth, beautiful edge there. Now, that's the real key now, isn't it? You get edges, people notice those edges. They don't know what it is. They get a feeling. They can't say, oh, look, that's straight edge. No, no, you just get a general feeling, and they're like, whoa, there's something about that that's really good. No, it's because the edge is fucking straight. So, I'm going to set this fucking mustache on fire one of these days, and that's not going to be fun. That's a Richard Pryor experience that you don't want to have. Anyways, so, first thing you're going to do is, most of the time you would say, well, look at the grass, you say, well, what kind of grass is it, what's its habits? And what does it, you know, what's the soil like? And, uh, you know, what's the drainage like? And uh, where's the sun coming? And how does it go? And let's observe it. And we don't know what kind of pests or birds or uh, neighborhood things are happening. And I say, those are all variables that a regular layman or an amateur or a beginner or a journeyman or any of those people are going to have to consider before they need to make a strategy and go. Not me. No, I'm beyond all of that. I fucking see it all. I was here two minutes. I saw the whole thing. I call it a soul story. I saw the whole past, the whole future. I know exactly what to do, how to do, and exactly what to do. It's just no problem. I don't know how to think about it. So... What we're going to do is we're going to make it super playable. We're going to make it smooth as shit. 
And we're eventually going to rotate that around. We're going to get rid of that rotary mower after the first season. The first season, we're going to do things they can't believe. Second season, we're going to bring in the real tools, and then the, 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 the contest is over. I'll be excluded from the competition, uh, you know, because it's just not fair to the rest of them. Now, I've been fortunate enough to have, that's my teacher. I got a teacher that did that uh, many times. Now, he wasn't cutting the grass. He was doing something else. But he run uh, the national championships at a very young age. As a fucking young young lad. He's like a fucking 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, 14-year-old. He's winning the national championships in the whole fucking country. And I'm gonna say it's, just, it's a big fucking country. And they wouldn't let him in anymore because he's ruined it for everybody because he's so much, like, he's just, he's just, you know, it's ridiculous. Oh, so they, they barred him from the competition. They retired him. Said, nay, you, you, no, go away, you're too, you know. That's the kind of thing we're dealing with. And so I don't care. I'm far beyond it, right? Listen. The grass speaks for itself. So what I do is I'll let you in on what I'm going to do. I got a whole plan. So first thing we're going to do is we're doing nothing new. Okay. I'm not doing anything special that I invented. No. I'm going to do things that uh, are uh, time tested, right? And developed by experts over long periods of time and uh, used in the field uh, for lower these many generations to, uh, with, with uh, uh, fantastic success. Mm -hmm. I'm going to employ a series of techniques and uh, various tactics in order to achieve a series of results culminating in a very high level of performance grass performance. So, what are these steps and how do you do it? So, well, I mean, it's very simple. Uh, you put the water, you put the sand, you put the seed. That's basically it. Create the conditions and make the grass grow. The grass wants to grow. That's the number one lesson. Number one lesson is that these plants, they desperately, powerfully want to grow. Their urge to live is as strong as yours. Did you know that? Did you know that a tiny little grass plant, a little fucking wee fucking piece of bent grass, it's a tiny little plant. Its will to live is as strong as yours, my friend. It's got a vibration that strong. So, the key to the power to being able to have success is to use that power. That's the power you want to use. That's your power source, right? And of course, it all comes from the sun, and you put the water and the sun and the seed and the soil and everything together. Sing them a little song, tell them a good vibration. Off you go, you're off the races. You've got little fucking sprouts of green shoots of goodness coming in. You grow it, and you grow it thick and tall. You build up a canopy, and you create different microclimates down in there. And then the next thing you know, you've got that beautiful, beautiful sward. And it's impressive when it's there. It's like a well shoveled driveway. Yeah, you don't notice. Until you see one, and and you don't really know it, but you get a feeling. And uh, what is that feeling? Well, most of the time, it's a terrible panic feeling. It's like, holy shit, what have I done with my life that I can't fucking, that, right? That's okay, that will pass. It's a shock of finally seeing something done the right way. I know it's all right. Nobody's got time for that. But that's why you see it here in this arena. And that's the key. The neighborhood now is an arena of retired folk who can afford to put their attention and focus their values in such a way that they're able to demonstrate, express, uh, you know, some higher level uh, situations. There's style. You know, people can do things uh, because they like to and because it looks good and uh, because they can do it, right? So that's what we're going to do. And I'm looking forward to the season. You know, you start with a rake and you work your way up to the space shuttle. And uh, when you get real good with the rake, you know when you get good with the rake? Well, I'll tell you. If you can, uh, if you can have a, a, a giant uh, wound from blistering where the rake has rubbed against the outside of your thumb on both sides, when you've got that, then you can switch to the shovel. Or maybe I'll give you a fucking blower or something. We're going to move the leaves. First thing we're going to remove all the leaves. We're going to rake it. We're going to get it all out, get the thatch going, right? 
scratch up the top surface and get some of that nematodes woken up and everybody's going to get to work. Then we're going to remove all the debris, that's for sure. Then we're going to come in with a little top dress and a little bit of seed. I'm going to go right away, not wait. Oh, we're going to get in there and get it done. Yeah. We're going to spread a little bit of the fertilizer we don't even know. We're going to go with a bit of the extra magnesium on this one. And uh, then we're going to put the water. <clears throat> now, as soon as she starts growing, we're doing the edges. And uh, we're going to look for the patches. And uh, I got, uh, of course, I got a secret batch of leftover Kilax from 20 years ago that I fucking bought it. When, before they banned the pesticides, went out and bought a fucking truckload of it. I fucking got it in the back there. So I've been using it out sparingly. And uh, kill those fucking weeds. Oh, that is true. I've given up on the pesticides. Pesticides are not the way. You know, I told a story uh, about the beavers. I'll tell you a story very quickly about these beavers. You know, if you ever want to deal with the beavers, you can, uh, you, you're going to learn your lesson very well. And uh, it's the same with everything else. You've got to have a solution, of course, that is uh, good for everybody. Right? And uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's basically it. We're waiting for the grass to get a little bit grump uh, jumping so we can get out there with the rake and get started. And uh, we're going we're gonna to take every lap on this race. You know, some races, you hang back, like a lot of my strategy for racing is to stay in second place. You don't want to lead every lap. You just lead on the last lap. You let the leader lead you. You know, you get pulled along, you know, let him set the pace. You just hide behind him there a little bit. Just follow him, follow him, follow him. That's no problem. And then right at the last time, right at the last minute, you pass him right at the end and you win. Now that, that's a good strategy. That strategy for me, very effective in car racing, right? Now, you're racing to the finish to be the greatest fucking lawn in the uh, neighborhood. Uh, that's not how you do it. You're going to win every lap. And so every stage of the way, it's, uh, it's like these snow shovelers, they get out there super early and they get at it. Well, that's the way you got to be. you got to be up early. Greenskeeper's got half his day done. By the time you're having your first morning coffee, uh, right? <clears throat> that's right. Greenskeeper uh, is ahead of the sun. Yeah? That's the way. Right? Don't wait for the sun. Don't wait for God to do the job of the greenskeeper. You have to get up and get at it. Get after it. So, uh, that's how we do. Now, I'm not a night waterer. I'm not going to hire a night waterer to come out here and fucking sit at the pond and fish all night and water the fucking... I'm not going to do any of that. And uh, we're not going to do any uh, syringe or anything. We're going to grow up a little bit taller. We're going to keep it about T height, no problem. We're not putting it on green height. That's next year. First, you're going to build it up and you're going to say, wow, that's the nicest tea. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a golf tea. The very best place in the, in the block will be like a, a nice patch of rough. The grass will be all, you know, three, four inches. And it'll be reasonable, you know, they'll have an edge or two, they'll have some borders happening, maybe. That's the only ones that are going to stay green. The ones that try to cut it short, of course, they go brown in the fucking uh, middle of the summer when the heat, and the heat comes and the fucking water stops. Yeah, that's okay. We've got water restrictions and I can't get out there and water it. So what are you going to do? Well, nobody in the world knows how to keep the grass green with no water in, this, in the heat, except for the secret and ancient order of the greens keeper. I'm, I'm a high priest in that one. I'll tell you what, I'm a fucking lodge master. And I'll tell you, <clears throat> I'm not giving you any of the secrets. You look at the results. This is what we call esoteric knowledge. It's not fucking exoteric. It's not for the masses. All right? It's like milk for the babies and meat for the men. And that's, I'm afraid, how it works. And so as far as how to make the grass short and green in the heat with no water, well, my friend, I'll go to my cave with that one. And if you want to know it, the only way to know that is to uh, start to uh, get yourself a rake <clears throat> and win your whole body and life has been consumed and scarred and bent and twisted uh, in the pursuit of making this happen under the tutelage of the person who knows then finally maybe on his deathbed he'll pass the knowledge on to you if you're lucky enough of course that's how it worked with me and that's how it works with everybody else so uh it takes a long time for these guys to die because they're super awesome and uh, you know by the time you're uh, when you got these uh, things these greenskeepers these uh what they call uh, superintendents is what they call them nowadays these are the guys who know everything they don't tell anybody anything and uh, they live a long time. They get a job for life. They're like a pope <clears throat> or, a, uh, you know, like a Supreme Court justice or something. You're appointed, you get the job for life. You're going to be in there. And uh, <clears throat> now a lot of these guys don't get the job until they're super old because it takes the last guy before them is uh, super old as well. So they get the job. They're old men. And then they just, that's when they finally start living, isn't it? Yeah. So they start, they got to live a whole life after that. So that's why they say super old. So you get these guys to be 100, 110 years old and they start to die off. That's okay. And they worked right to the last day. That's okay. Sometimes they just sit in a cart. 
It doesn't matter. It's still working. Keeping their eye on a team because they're the only ones who know. They don't tell anybody anything. If they tell somebody something, they get replaced. That, that's not how it works. You got to make the place completely dependent. Who's got the institutional memory? Only one guy. That's the guy. So <clears throat> this is a problem. That guy gets paid more. Shouldn't have to happen. That guy gets a free house and a bunch of other things that goes with it. So they don't want that anymore. They're trying to change it over. They got the college boys coming in, right? Now you go to fucking uh, go to university. You go to Cornell. You go over there to Cornell. You get into their turf institute. You get with the fun scientists and everything. I mean, you're in the laboratory there, learning how to make, uh, make the grass green in the heat. And uh, they're going to tell you the secret knowledge. You pay them hundred thousand dollars to come out. You're going to get a job shoveling, and uh, someone's going to give you a rake. What are they going to say? So you keep raking, motherfucker. And when I die, maybe on my fucking deathbed, I'll tell you where the fucking uh, sprinkler head uh, connections are. Until then, keep raking. Make your line straight. Stay ahead of the golfers. And that's the way it should be. But I tell you, that's how it goes for me. So it's hard-pressed, hard-won knowledge. You can't read it in the book. Listen, I went to, I went to the schools. I went to, I went to the finest turf institutes there was. I learned from the finest teachers that there ever was. Yeah? As soon as they taught me to quit, they retired. They were done. And uh, sure. And uh, the only reason I did that was because I had to move. If I was able to stay at the same place, I'm just waiting for that guy to die. But if you're going to move around, you can get back to the end of the line again. I can't have that. But listen, I need to know how to make this fucking grass green. So I got to know. And now I know. And I got several times. I've had guys tell me how to do it, and I've done it myself many times. And I'm not about to tell you how to do it, but I'll let you watch me. Huh? That's how you're going to do it. Now watching you ain't going to tell you. You ain't going to figure it out by watching me, but you will see the results. And why is that? Because <clears throat> that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out there and uh, I'm going to make it all work just exactly perfect. And uh, no one's going to know exactly how I did it, but they're going to notice. And they may not even notice, but it'll generate a feeling. And for anybody who does notice, they might say, what is that? Now, for anybody who does actually have a look, there might be a very small number of them who will know what they're looking at. And those people will say, oh, my gosh, look at that. Can you believe that? I've never seen anything like that. When's the last time you saw something like that? Look here, missus, have a look at that. What do you think? And she'll say, well, I don't even know what that is. And you'll say, don't you know? I told you before, this is one of those things where you got the thing. And she'll say, oh, no, that can't be because that's a special thing. I said, no, come and look. You won't believe it. She says, oh, wow, yeah, you're right. I think I can't believe it. That's weird. Let's go home and look it on the internet. I can't believe somebody. Whoa, who is that guy? We gotta go. That's how it goes. Now, how many times is that going to happen? Zero. Maybe once. It's okay. It doesn't matter. That's the way it always is, right? It's for those with eyes to see. It's for those with ears to hear. Right? That's all. What do you think? I'm, uh, you know, not interested in changing anybody's mind. Now I'm going to go around door to door and say, hey, did you see my yard? Did you know how smart I am? Did you know how fucking powerful and goodness I know? Do you know what it takes to learn to do what I did, what I did right there? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it. And the people who can see it and recognize it, they'll see it and they'll recognize it. Everybody else just get a feeling. They won't even know what it is. They'll walk past and they'll just get a feeling. They won't know. And they'll have all kinds of feelings. It's okay. It doesn't matter. That's part of the fun. But as far as ranking, of course, <clears throat> I wouldn't even worry. I'm not even worried. You know, I uh, the only people who are... Uh, uh, who could uh, compete against me are uh, currently occupied <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, they're not interested in competing in this arena. No, of course not. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, they're not retired. They're still in the game. Still out there chasing it. They're still out there chasing it and pushing it. And I say that's fine. You know, when you're chasing perfection, you know, so many times it happened to me. I'd get out there after the morning meeting, you know, everybody, all the greenskeepers, they gather, they drive the trucks in to go to the shop. They get there, it's fucking five o'clock in the morning, everybody's standing around with their coffees and the boss comes around and tells everybody what to do on that day, right? Gives everybody their assignments, tells them how to go out and do the thing. You got an army of guys, you got 20 guys, you can go tell them how to do what to do. Guy comes out, does that first thing in the morning meeting. And, uh, wait, I tell you, I can't even tell you. I've had enough. They can't even think of it. <clears throat>